And I'm here to make kind of a serious video with you. I just wanted to give you updates on my lifestyle and my health and things like that. So you guys know that I suffer from IBS and there are many different types of IBS and many different reasons for people having the certain types of IBS that they have. So when I first like went plant-based and I realized that foods were making me bloated, I just thought, oh, well, bloating is just like a part of life. Like it's a part of life. But if you have IBS, you know that the bloating is not just, it's just not cosmetic. It actually physically hurts like to move and you feel like you're getting like super bad, like cramps, even worse than period cramps. Let me tell you one more time. They're worse than period cramps, okay? I started trying to have less fiber in my diet because I'd realized like eating plant-based that it was the fiber for me that made it a little bit difficult for my intestines to like move around. So I kind of went on a higher fat, you know, plant-based diet, eating a lot more, you know, nut butters, and things like that and that helped a little bit and incorporating like high protein tofu and stuff but then from there i started getting more and more like bloated and especially doing like fitness stuff i have to eat a lot more than i did when i was just thin right um to build muscle and to keep up muscle and to like repair my body properly and so i've tried every sort of digestive enzyme anything i could buy online i probably spent thousands of dollars in the last few years just buying a lot of digestive enzymes and trying them all out for like a month or so i've tried every sort of probiotic and i go back and forth to the doctor quite regularly like even from doctors like here i've tried several types of medications for ibs i've tried those medical grade like really strong probiotics that doctors give you and then nothing really was working but last year it got to the point where my cramps would get so bad by the evening that actually I couldn't walk and it just felt like everything was swollen and then it got to the point where I couldn't sit like every time I sat down it just felt like somebody was taking a brick and just like squishing everything up and I was like what is happening it was so uncomfortable so I was just basically laid down for a lot and just farting every five minutes of the day. So I went back to the doctor and they ran a whole bunch of tests and like checked and did like scans. She showed me or the pictures and I was actually like so shocked, but my intestines were actually bleeding all into my abdomen. And so everything was swollen and everything was bleeding. And the doctor was like, if you had just been more stubborn and wait maybe until the next day or the day after and come in, you might have needed some sort of surgery because you really effed up your intestines pretty bad. And so at that point in time, she ordered like allergy tests and stuff like that. So the allergy and intolerance tests came back and then we found out one, that I'm allergic to soy, which is why even though when I cut down on my fiber and I was eating all that high protein tofu, things just got worse, like really bad. Cause I had realized that beans are really bad for me doesn't matter if I take enzymes or Beano and like gas medication and all that. It was just no. So that's why I switched to just having high protein tofu. Anyway, so I can't do soy anymore, which, okay. And we found out that I'm allergic to cucumbers, which sucks. And seitan and like mock meats and stuff, can't do beans, can't do tofu, what are you gonna eat? And especially if you have to keep under a low amount of fiber, which is something that the doctor told me, I have to eat under 35 grams of fiber a day or so, which to be a plant-based eater and you can't have high protein tofu or mock meats and things, what? you know, what are you gonna eat to get even all the calories that you need, let alone, you know, the protein, especially if you're an athlete like me, someone who works out every day. So the doctor told me that I'm just, I'm just gonna have to eat like animal products. So I told her, I was like, okay, well, how about we try things like uh, eggs and uh, bivalves, things like oysters. I'll have fish occasionally. It's a little bit difficult, especially if someone like me who always believe that there always must be a plant-based solution. I think if I wasn't allergic to soy, then I still would be able to get away with just eating a lot of high protein tofu and you know having little vegetables on the side, but I can't. And then also because I know about like overfishing in the ocean and how dirty it is, it's like, Oh, that's kind of why I'm sticking with just bivalves because bivalves like can be farmed ecologically, especially oysters. They can clean the water. So that's basically it. I guess 
what would you call me a bivalve egg eating sometimes fish eating eater but oh my god i feel so much better like i've already eaten several meals today and there's like no pain ever so i know that was long and lengthy but i also just wanted to add in what i eat in a day so you can be updated and see kind of how i eat and what i eat in a day so let's get right to it so when i wake up in the morning i am a little bit hungry but i do find i don't have enough time between eating and working out i'm not getting up earlier so i can eat breakfast so i just switched my workout time earlier and i still work out on an empty stomach. But instead of being completely empty, I like to have, you guys know I've talked about having my teamy greens before. I like to either have teamy greens or I like to have matcha green tea. So another food that actually I can't eat, like because of my IBS, is coffee. And it sucks because I like the flavor of coffee. I just drink it because I like it. I like having a warm like beverage in the morning. But since coffee hurts my stomach, I've switched over to teamy matcha green tea. If you're somebody who is trying to like quit coffee or whatever, matcha does have a considerable amount of caffeine in it when you compare it to other teas so if you're looking for a little energy boost then having something like matcha powder could be really helpful to you it's also really high in antioxidants which is amazing so what I like to do is I like to I already put it in the cup because you know I, I spill things so I just like to put it in a little mug get some hot water don't spill it on your legs don't spill it on your legs it just smells so good. It's something just so nice and comforting about a warm beverage in the morning, especially now because it's the winter time. Mm. So, so good. I prefer matcha over like green tea, green tea bags because I think that matcha just has a more like rich flavor. So another thing that I might have in the morning, if I'm not feeling like having a hot beverage, is I might actually have my Teamy Greens Superfood Powder, which you guys know I've been having for years, actually. And one other thing that I actually I cannot eat is protein powder actually is really not good for me anymore. Anyway, so the reason why I love the Teamy Greens is just because, one, they don't have fillers or additives. There's no like artificial colors or flavorings or anything like that. And it has a lot of good things in it. It has, you know, spirulina, you know, wheatgrass, it has like broccoli powder, you know, kale powder, wait, there's so many, let me see. kale powder, kelp powder, you know, celery powder, just a lot of good like green vegetable powders just blended up in there. So if you're someone who's busy and you don't have a lot of time to eat, or if you're like kind of on the go, it's a good way to get a lot of vitamins and minerals and to get a huge dose of your daily, you know, vegetable recommendations and it's actually not chalky and it dissolves well in liquids and water which is really good and so i'll have this in the morning like before i hit up the gym and i find that it helps me gives me kind of like a subtle boost in energy i think it's a little bit better than just going completely fasted at least my body is getting some sort of vitamins and minerals without taking up a lot of space so if you would like to get these you can get 20 percent off if you use the code down below all the links and everything will be in the description box so after i have my beverage then I like to hit up the gym I gotta hit the beat I gotta hit the beat beat I gotta hit the beat I gotta hit the beat beat I gotta hit the beat Welcome to Megan's, not Megan's, home kitchen because we're preparing to move and it looks horrible. So I cut out protein powder. So typically right after my workout, I'll have my first meal, meal meal of the day. And so what I would typically have is some egg whites and kind of make like a spinach, bell pepper, omelet type thing and then have it with a bowl of oatmeal. I also can't have so much oatmeal because I do have to keep my fiber intake under about 35. So what I would typically do, I kind of like just prepared everything. A couple of egg whites and just like one egg yolk every few days. Uh, today is a egg yolk day. I just like, I didn't want to have to bring and crack eggs from home. So I was like, let me just um, bring some. I never thought I would be cooking eggs or anything not plant-based on camera. So it's kind of weird and awkward, but whatever. Just put a little tiny bit of salt, some pepper. So then I'm going to take some, I love these little like tiny peppers. 
I'm not good at chopping at all. So at the end, I'm gonna have about two cups of like spinach that I like to throw in. Chop them up. I did not mix that up properly, but it's okay. Might be too hot. I think this thing is too hot. This is like not my house, so. And then I put all the spinach on. Just smash those down. You ready? What? Yes. It's the only way to flip something in a pan. So I've got my kind of omelet here with a couple of strawberries cut up. And I have that with a side of PB2 oatmeal. So what I like to do when I make my oatmeal is I put, instead of putting like sugar and stuff in it, I like to put just a couple tablespoons of the PB2 powder in chocolate because it gives it a nice like flavor. So what I also like to do is I like to put nut butter in it. This week's nut butter is homemade almond butter. And so I just put a couple of tablespoons in there. Meal one, smashed. It was delicious. Typically for my next meal of the day, I like to have some sort of soup and a rice. And I typically would keep it more on the plant-based side, but I also am a fan of having leftovers. And the night before we had something, it's a Korean dish called gulgukbap, which is just like, uh, basically like oyster rice soup. Anything that's a gukbap in Korean is you put the rice in it, in the liquid and like mix it up. So it's like basically oysters and rice soup. And that's what we had yesterday. So because it's a leftover, I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave some grains like kind of hurt my stomach a little bit so these days I just stick with a little bit of black rice and white rice mixed together so basically oh, you just mix it in and I know it seems weird there's about like five oysters in there and I know you're probably like that does not look that appetizing but it tastes so good and so since it's a leftover I kind of want to have some fresh like onions on the top instead of like I mean leeks I guess whatever you want to call these because they give it a little bit of freshness and crunch Yum. I first, when I first saw oysters, I was like, they look so scary. And it's like, who, who wants to eat that? But this Korean soup is really good. When you move to Korea, you eat things you think you would eat. Mm. So for dinner today, actually, I'm going to be eating some grilled salmon with a random greens and sprout salad with a little bit of avocado broccolini and I'm going to have a black tahini dressing. I really love uh, tahini but black tahini to me just has a more rich flavor. I don't know like if it's more nutrient dense or whatever but I just like the flavor of it more than regular tahini and I just make a little dressing with that, pop it on over. And one big thing that has changed is you know typically in Korea there's rice like three times a day and I typically ate rice three times a day but since my diet changed and has a little bit less plant foods in it now and I don't have things like you know, beans and stuff, then in order to make sure I get enough potassium, I actually switched out one of my rices for having a potato. And that typically allows me to reach my daily recommended amount of potassium that I need for the day. Just because bananas, interestingly, make my stomach hurt. I don't know why, <laughs> but they do. So anyway, potatoes it is. the potatoes boil. Also, you might think I'm weird, but I kind of like raw garlic in the potatoes, <laughs> which is why I didn't, you know, boil or cook or saute the garlic before. I love the flavor. It's really strong and it gets in your breath, but it just tastes so much better. And I'm going to use a little bit of herb salt. It's just like a random mixture of herbs and salt. It's not as strong as salt. It has pepper and stuff in it as well. Whenever possible, I just kind of like pre-mixed like herbs seasonings just because 
it's much easier. Like I'm trying to do things that are gonna be relatively quick, but also very delicious. So next what I'm gonna do is take the salmon. And I like to cut up salmon into somewhat bite-sized pieces. And for the spices for this one is like kind of my favorite sort of Cajun-y spice blend. So while that is sauteing, I'm just going to prepare the salad. Sauce. What can I make the sauce in? I'm going to take a few tablespoons of tahini. Let me wipe this spoon off so it doesn't get the Cajun seasonings in it. So a couple tablespoons of some black tahini. I like to put a little bit of minced garlic, of course, because I'm the garlic queen. Then I'm going to just put the juice of about one lemon in there. And then you can just add some water till it gets to your desired consistency. All right, and this is what my last meal of the day would typically be. And then I would just drizzle a little bit of the like sauce on it as I eat. I have to package this up and take it home because that's what I'm gonna eat later today. Uh, so I don't wanna put the dressing on now because sometimes it kind of can wilt the lettuce a little bit. But holy, like the Cajun seasoning on salmon is really good. It's like, it's my favorite combination. Just be rude and eat with my hands. And this is what I would have for dinner typically, you know? And there you have it. So there's an app that I like to use called Chronometer that you can type in everything that you have eaten or you are going to eat that day and kind of see your vitamin and mineral like intake and your macro breakdown. So for the day, I've eaten about 2,300 calories, which is about, you know, what I need to like maintain myself. Um, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of protein and quite a lot of vitamin B12. I typically wouldn't have oysters and salmon in one day, uh, but because we had it for leftovers, the oyster soup, I didn't want it to go to waste because my husband probably wouldn't have eaten it, so I just ate it. And it's crazy how much is in there. Five oysters, it really kicks up all the vitamin B12 you need a lot. Um, plenty of iron and everything. The only thing that I typically um, lack on a daily basis is calcium, so I have a calcium supplement here. And the calcium supplement is one where two pills is your full daily recommended amount. So as you can see, I get 69% and I regularly get about 60 to 70% of the calcium. So I just take one of those pills a day and you know, that pushes me over for the amount of calcium that I need. But all the other things, iron and everything are there. Um, it is heavy on the protein side, but again, I can only have about 35 grams of fiber a day before you know my stomach hurts i think fiber is on here too let's find it yeah so today i had 37 grams of fiber so a little bit higher but only by two grams so it's not noticeable so i guess it's still you know higher than the recommended amount but much lower than what i was getting before when i was eating just you know plant-based stuff yeah and in terms of macronutrients as you can see mine are pretty like equal in terms of calories and that works for me um a little bit more carbs than other things but I find that, that that works the best for me. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video and you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to my YouTube page, which is down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, not on Snapchat, because I don't use that no more. Like me on Facebook and I'll see ya.